Right, so today we've got a post bag, which is not something I do very often. I can't even remember the last time I did one, but there's quite a lot here today, so we're gonna go through some of it. Um, I think this one's got lots in, so we'll put that to the side and we'll go through the smaller packages from China and this one appears to be from the UK. So let's put these to the side. There's a couple with the same label on, uh, RGB light. Let's see what's in those. So move everything out of the way. First one, RGB light. Aha, okay, so I only ordered these a little over a week ago, I think. Uh, these are some extra EL filaments. EL filaments, that's not what I mean. It's because it said EL on something else. These are little LED filaments. So they're like cob filaments. Um, so it's a PCB covered in some kind of phosphor type silicon material. And these are gonna be used in a project I'm working on with Sion. I haven't replied to him yet, but I will do. Let's get the other one open while we're here, because it's gonna probably be the same, but maybe a different kind. They look exactly the same. <laughs> maybe I just ordered multiples and they came separately. So that's, oh, they look slightly different. You see a color difference there. Interesting. Maybe they're just not very uh, accurately produced, but we've got lots and lots of these now. Links to all this stuff will be in the description. Ah, this is interesting. So these are some cables I picked up. Now I realized that some of the things that I work on have barrel jacks on them. And I don't really have anything to hook up to my power supply with a barrel jack, unless I destroy one of my connectors. But these are male and female barrel jacks to crocodile clips, which is brilliant. So I can throw it on my power supply and then hook it straight into whatever the product is that I've got. So I can measure the, uh, the supplied power rather than hooking a multimeter in line with it or something like that. Uh, so I've got male and female. And the reason I've got um, these ones is because I want to play around with that USP, uh, uninterruptible power supply, UPS. Um, so I need sort of input and output, and we're just going to see uh, how it works. What, you know, if, if there's any kind of wavering of the power when you uh, flip it over to the internal battery or not, if it's going to keep a Raspberry Pi running, for example. So we'll look at that in due course, but at the moment I'm not ready to do that. There's too many other things going on, but I thought I'd get these in. So next up, we've got one called EL Products. So we'll try that one. I've taken to uh, putting post-it notes on the front of these now instead of uh, scribbling over the address because often it doesn't work very well. Uh, oh God, how many times have I done a sort of post bag and pulled out one of these? <laughs> this is just a little uh, nano, so we can pull that out. I can't remember, what, oh yeah, it's because I'm using one in, um, in the thingy project. Oh yeah, the light with the capacitance box thing. So I'm using one of those and so that means I need to replace it because it's the only one that I have. So um, yeah, cool. Well, it's the only one that I have that's not being used. So every other one's in like a dedicated thing now. So I've got one of those. Uh, what are we going for next? How about this bulky one here? What does it, it doesn't say anything on it. Where's it come from? Oh, it's it's from the UK, so that's interesting. Ooh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so as well as um, needing those uh, DC plugs, I wanted some banana plugs that plug straight into my power supply or into other things which have banana plugs, uh, like the decade counter or the resistance box that I have. And so I've got two sets of these banana plugs on one end, crocodile clips on the other, or alligator, I don't know which ones they are. These are a bit more snub-nosed, so maybe it's a crocodile. So yeah, two of those. Uh, I'll put links in the description for those because they're really useful little things, and I think they were really cheap. Uh, next up, we've got this one. 
It doesn't say what it is on it, but it's from the Royal Mail, so it's a UK one. But it also says eBay, reuse this bag, sell now on eBay. Um, I don't think it's a reusable bag. So maybe they expect you to uh, cut it and then reseal it with a bit of tape maybe. I don't want to pull anything out here that might have my address on it. Oh, I don't know what this is. No, oh, it's these. I was wondering what it was. I thought, I don't have anything that slim, do I? Anyway, when I um, made that, uh, that other Neo 7 segment of Sion's, I had to use one of the ICs, or one of the, the LEDs out of the unmade kit to complete the last one, because I'd burnt one up. So I thought I'd get a few, um, and hopefully they're the right kind and they're not uh, sort of cheap versions or anything. So yeah, I've got those. What's this poster? Heaven knows. Just advertising for free there now. Uh, what have we got left? Is that it? I think there's one more. Ooh. Yeah, that's it. So we come to the last one, which is a big one. So this one is from Tandy Electronics. Now I'm a big fan of Tandy. If you go onto their website, I, I think it's like Tandy Online or something. I can't recall now, but um, they have loads of cool stuff at great prices and their delivery charge isn't very big. So um, I went on there and bought quite a few little things and there's stuff you can't really find um, on eBay sometimes. And one of them is in here. Oh, look at that. I don't even need to use the knife. Right, just take out the bit of paper so you don't see my address and everything on there. And I'll be able to read from that. God, it looks like their, uh, their printer was running out of ink. Uh, so we've got lots and lots of little bits in here. There's a little project box. They all come shrink wrapped in like Tandy stuff too. So it sort of smacks a little bit of, uh, of Maplin Tandy, but it's only online, which means their costs are a lot less than Maplin works. They had staffing costs. So we've got a project box here. Just rip this open. Now, this is gonna be for that, uh, the sort of decade box thing where I want to have nine volts coming in and then my, my circuit in here with a five volt regulator, uh, which will then power the bulb or PWM, the, the MOSFET. So I've got this, which looks pretty darn cool. So I like that. How much was that? So this was two pounds and 33 pence for that enclosure. And look, you've got metal inserts on the, uh, the screws there, which is fantastic. So be able to reuse this for other things. I'm probably gonna drill a hole in either side. I've got some cable grommet things where they sort of cable glands. So I can actually have the cable going in and out the other side, which would be lovely. Next up, we have this larger bag with some other bits in. Now these are sort of fun things really. There we go. So, oh, this is gonna take a while, isn't it? Let's just cut all these open. Now this is a, an on off switch and let's come a little bit closer, shall we? So this is an on off switch and it has this lovely little sort of overlay that uh, if you unscrew this, you can take it off. I purchased one of these from Tandy before and I stuck it on, um, remember I, I made a Bluetooth boom box a long, long time ago. Uh, so you can take this off, put it on one side of the uh, enclosure and this bit goes on the bottom so that it's a nice clean button. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's rated for, I'm not sure what, it's rated at 12 volts at, I think it was like five amps or something. I should say on the back, no, 1.5 amps at 250 volts. So at 12 volts, that's gonna be an awful lot basically. So I don't know if you can read that, it's kind of difficult, isn't it? Hang on a minute. Is that a bit easier? There we go, you can probably see it now. So 1.5 amps at 250 volts AC. Uh, it doesn't have a DC rating, it says three amps at 125, so you can assume it's gonna be pretty high at 12 volts DC. Uh, so it's just a single pole, single throw, on off. Nice sounding button as well. 
Uh, I bought two of those because I think they're really useful. Um, and at, uh, how much were these? 83 pence for each one. So that's actually quite good. And you can't, can't really get these on eBay. I couldn't see any. So 83p, not too bad at all. Um, right here we have, what are these? Oh, I see. So these are um, Chrome LED holders. Let's see if we can focus in a little better on these, shall we? Yeah, these are Chrome LED holders. I hadn't quite expected that weird uh, rubber grommet thing on the back that the LED leads go through, but that's an interesting take on stopping water getting in, I guess. But uh, where are they? They were here, so, ah, there they are. So I also bought two red LEDs. Those um, chrome holders, they were 82 pence for a two pack. So actually it was really cheap for two of those, or seemingly cheap. I'm sure you could go on uh, eBay or in AliExpress and find them cheaper. But I also bought two LEDs and these were eight pence each, I think. So they're pretty cheap. I don't, doesn't, turns out I don't actually have any sort of normal red LEDs. So I picked some up um, and they should just slot in, I hope, if uh, I get the legs in. I tell you what, I bet that bottom bit comes off, doesn't it? It does, good. So you pop the LED in like that. So yeah, the LED goes in there. Oh no, it goes from the bottom, it looks like. Ah, that makes more sense. So it goes in from the bottom and then you use this to bung it in, I guess. So let's just do that. So just slot those two together. Not as easy as I'd imagined. There we go. So that's what I was looking for. And this is going to go on that telephone. Um, someone mentioned that it would be cool to have a red light on it, like a, uh, an emergency phone. And I thought that is a great idea. It's going to have an alarm, but wouldn't it be brilliant to also have a, a nice red light? So we've got a collar system here as well. I can't undo that because uh, it's slipping in my hands at the moment. But yeah, I've got two of those. One just in case I mess up and for other projects. What is this? There's an IC here. Um, don't remember ordering. Oh, yes, I do. Hang on. And there we go, sort of in focus. So this is a PIC 12F683. Um, and this was 66 pence, so it wasn't expensive. And I had that PIC kit 2 lying around. It took me quite a lot of Googling to figure out what chips worked with it, but it turns out this one does. So going to be having a little go with that. And um, I might use it in the telephone um, as the driver for the bells. Because the, uh, I don't think the Raspberry Pi can really drive it in the way that I want it to. So I'm going to be using that. Oh, it's going out of focus. There we go. Yeah, I'm going to be using that. Uh, oh, there's a couple more here. Oh, these are also picks. I see. So I won't get both of them out because two of them are the same. But this is another pick. This is the, are you in focus? Roughly. This is the uh, PIC 12F, oh no, it's not the PIC 16, because it's 16 pins, I guess. PIC 16F54, does that say? So this is another controller that should work. I can't guarantee it, I don't know. Um, we'll see, but it was, um, it was fairly cheap. This was uh, 66 pence for two. So uh, yeah, they were cheap. Um, so I've got two of each of these, um, so. Is that there? Is that everything? Yeah, that appears to be the lot. So that's what I, oh, hang on a minute. There's more, hold on. God, this is getting messy now. Let's move some things out of the way where they'll probably stay for ages, I have to admit. Um, let's just clear a little bit away. Um, stuff for the binary clock, the last of the kits has arrived. So we've got uh, the JK flip flops. Those are the 4027s. Uh, we've got a load of the 4060. There's only one for each kit. 
So there's 15 there, and I think I already have one, so there's 16 in total. And I should have 16 boards. Where are they? I don't know. We'll see in a second. Uh, we've got the BCD up-down counters, so there's 100 of those. There should be five for each board, which means I've got enough for 20, I think, if I can do the maths. It might even be six. Six for each board? Six for each board, yeah. Uh, we've got the oh, 470 ohm resistors, 0805s. We've got uh, the 4081s, which I've already opened. I don't know where they are. Oh yeah, the 4081s. And a bunch of new buttons I ordered. Uh, I don't think I needed them. Why did I order them? Never mind. We've got them. Oh yeah, uh, a lot of these are 104s, so they're a 100 nanofarad. A bunch of diodes, because they're required for each one. And I think I've got PCBs, so let me just go and grab them. I forgot, I've also got uh, some extra LEDs. So that should be 200, 300? I don't know how many's in there. I think I've got enough though. So hopefully uh, that all works out. But here are the PCBs, they have arrived. I had to pay, really annoyingly, I had to pay um, import duty on them, which was uh, frustrating, but I think it was in the region of about 27 pounds. So. Unfortunately, I am going to have to raise the price of the kits ever so slightly just to cover that cost because I am working at cost. Uh, so everything is uh, as much as it costs me to buy it. So these are... That doesn't look good. I'll have to trace some of these out, but there's a... Bit of a problem on the solder mask, but they're now black, as you can see. Let's come down a bit. Yeah, they're now black, but if you look over here, you can see like a... You have to just do a little experiment here. There's a... No, it's just some gunk. Maybe it'll come off with some isopropyl alcohol. We'll see. I won't mess around with it too much. I don't want to scrape anything off but it does look like a trace isn't covered. I'm going to, we're just gonna to have to check this. Yeah, well, we look at that. That is not a nice sign. We've got a trace that runs down here on every one of these ICs and the uh, solder mask hasn't quite dried there maybe. Uh, and you can see a bare trace. I'll uh, probe it out and make sure it works, but um, that's a bit frustrating. I might not sell that one. I don't know how many we have actually, because oftentimes you usually get more than you ask for. So let's have a look. It's very annoying actually, because I have to pay the import duty. Not that I disagree with the import duty, but it is frustrating when you're these boards don't come out well on this camera at all, do they? It is frustrating when uh, things like that happen. So let's have a little count. One, two, three, four. There's 10 there. And there's 10 there. So I've got 20, which is more than, is that more than I ordered? I'll check. I thought I ordered 22. Not sure. Anyway, we've got enough. There was a couple of other bits. Where are they? Oh, there's one here. This is really kind of cool. I'm just going to cut straight through the middle. Yeah. This is a little uh, a display device and I thought it'd be fun. I want to make one of those. Do you remember how I made that Commodore 64? No, Commodore PET. Uh, why isn't that opening? Commodore PET miniature 3D computer and it had uh, sort of a clock on it and the temperature. Well, I thought we'd do another little miniature computer. So I've got one of these tiny little displays. Um, it only uses four wires, so VCC and ground and SDN and SCL. And I think it's 0.9 inch, but it should be fun at least. 
comes with a little header. I think that's going to look great inside a little uh, 3D printed enclosure. Uh, I keep coming up with more. So there's another thing here, which is uh, this is a a boost circuit. So this takes a voltage in and it boosts it to a higher voltage out. I can't remember where I bought this from or I think I know why I bought it. I think it was for the telephone because the, the bell on it requires something like, uh, or I thought it required something in the region of 70 volts. Turns out it doesn't. I can run it from 12, so I don't really need this. But if I choose to put five volts in, um, then I will need something to boost that voltage. But I think I'm going to go with 12 volts in, regulate it down for the, uh, the Raspberry Pi that's going to be in there. And lastly, related to the binary clock. This is even more exciting. This is from Stephen Ludgate. And I'm sorry, Stephen, it has taken me ages to get to this, but I wanted to wait till I had more news about the, the binary clock. So the, the other boards will be going up on Tindy as soon as I'm able to source envelopes and little plastic bags. So I've already looked on eBay and I think they'll be coming this week or next week. But uh, he's put an envelope in there. Let's have a little read, shall we? Not an envelope, a letter. Uh, so he says, hi, David. Thanks for the BCD crap clock kit. It was a lot of fun to put together, as you've seen, and it's a brilliant functional bit of electronics, as well as being a work of art. Well, that's very kind. Uh, Stephen made the, uh, the kit, so I'll put a link in the description where you can go and have a look at it. I've already mentioned it before, but uh, he, he did a good job of not pronouncing, uh, not pronouncing, just getting the name wrong, basically, saying the, what did he say, binary decimal clock, I think he said, but yeah, that, the BCD stands for binary coded decimal, so it's not really a binary clock, it's only saying that uh, if it says 12, 20, it's one is in binary, two is in binary, two is in binary and zero is in binary. Or, well, there's no binary for zero, is there? Uh, in this LED scenario anyway. Uh, please find and close the return leg of our Swapsy. So if you recall that I offered some up for swap, not many people took it up, but uh, Steve certainly did, uh, or Ludgate, as I like to call him, and um, Dave Darko from Germany also took that up. So might be seeing some things from that, who knows. Anyway, this is the return. So some 3D printed cases for the clock. We've all seen your 3D printing mishaps. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Uh, so I've enclosed all the versions for you, which include a standard one with access to the power header pins, a clear back for the one, uh, for one for people who want to see the back end of the clock and have full access both sides and a USB version, which has a micro USB port embedded into the case with some header pins. Uh, extended to connect the clock. I've had to make the female pins a custom fit due to the space, but they work well. The USB version is my favorite. I've also added an extra clear back to one in another color. And I was also sending a few of the fronts, but I figured you should have the same number of front parts to back parts. So you've got a gnarly green front one for one of them. Be careful, in my infinite wisdom, the front part is not symmetrical. Okay, if you get it the wrong way around, it doesn't quite sit right. That's cool. Uh, enjoy the cases. Feel free to, get, to keep them all or give some away. There's a couple of stowaways hitching a ride too. All the best, Steve. P.S. He's going to email me the digital files, so I'll add them to the store link and on to my website as well. Let's have a wee look. It would help if I knew where the blooming crap clock was, wouldn't it? I don't. Oh, and that is everything. That is all shit. Ah, oh, hello. He's putting a couple of key rings for me here. Look at these guys. I don't know if you can see. It's like a, a glittery 3D filament. Those are beautiful. And this is the, uh, the 3D printed case with the, oh, it's got like a, a micro USB connector in the back. That's ace onto some little pin headers. Where did you get those pin header things from? Those uh, female connectors. That's fascinating. I like the look of those. Wow, this is cool. Oh, and it's got some, 
Oh, he's used um, rubber bands for feet here. Look at that. So it doesn't slide around. That's cool. Oh, I wish I knew where the blooming clock was. And then here's we've got the uh, the one with the green. So again with the the rubber feet. How does that come off? All oh, right. Okay. You can just sort of squeeze it. We're probably a bit too close, aren't we? There we go. That's really nice. And this one. Hello. Check that out. Oh, is that split? Oh no, that's the front. Oh, it's got like gold inside. Is that in the filament, Steve? Or is that, um, did you paint that on? Because there seems to be like a gap here where there isn't any. Or did you mark the top? Oh, that's probably what it is, isn't it? Oh, these are beautiful. Yeah, I really love this filament. I wonder if that's like a bit of a pain to print with. Perhaps it gets stuck or wears away the extruder. And look what else he sent. This is a one PCB to ruler them all. I like that. And so we've got, so this is so you can measure what uh, packages are what, I guess. And that's a, uh, is that like an American wire gauge? Yeah, it is. So you can measure what wire gauge is what. I don't know if I've got anything. <laughs> Have I got anything here where I can measure? Yeah, I do. I've got a, me a wire over here, which is probably uh, 16, I would have thought, uh, but we can find out. Yeah, it is a 16. It's the ideal breadboard one, I think. And so what else have we got on here? Is it one of these functional ones where you can put a battery on? No, it's not. But so we've got the HC49, the D2 pack, SOT223, SOT89, SOT23. And then down to the other packages, 1206, 1808, 0805, all the way down to 0201. Is that how small they are? Right, so there's this kit that um, people have been trying to encourage me to get for a while and it's called the SMD challenge and I'd never seen an 0201 package before but that is very small. Where are my tweezers? Would I be even be able to pick up one of those with these? Oh, maybe. That's very unlikely though, isn't it? I'd have to sort of just hold it down or even super glue it. 0201, I'm not sure. 0402, I could do that. Yikes, wow. So thank you very much, Stephen. I really appreciate that. Um, and I hope you guys have enjoyed this little look into what came through my letterbox. Um, I don't often do these things because I tend to open stuff as it arrives really because I'm really desperate to use it. So anyway, I'll speak to you all soon and hopefully the next thing you'll hear will be the next installment of me and Sion designing the seven segment display. We're going to do it all publicly and I'm going to address everything to him. I do read your comments about it, but I'm not going to reply to you directly because it's going to be me and Sion sort of just having a, a back and forth, but your comments are really appreciated. Uh, like ones about how to drive the, the LEDs, different chips, that kind of thing. It's really, really interesting. So it's nice to read that. And then me and me and uh, Sion can have a bit of a back and forth about it. So I will speak to you all very soon.